For Krima Media's Policy, I'm Sane Lamini. Joining me today is Knowledge Director at Ipsos Sub-Saharan Africa, Mari Harris, to discuss their recent survey titled Possible Political Party Choices in the 2024 election. So only 62% of eligible voters are registered to vote uh, ahead of the 2024 elections, at least for now. You say that it, it is up to the media, political parties, the IEC, and other stakeholders uh, to boost the numbers. Do you have any suggestions on how uh, more people could be persuaded? I think it is, as I also said, it's, it's uh, also up to individual South Africans. I think every time we uh, talk about politics or say anything, we should ask the people we are talking to whether you're registered and fire them or, or ask them to go and register. I think the media can help the IEC a lot with um, campaigns on the media, even if you... Um, Say, for instance, your television station, there can be a little flag at the bottom saying, have you registered to vote? Or a thing coming up before the news saying, go and register to vote. Or it is easy to register to vote. Because these days you can do it electronically. You do not need to go to any office of the IEC or a special day or anything like that. You can register electronically and I think it makes it a lot easier for South Africans to register. Because my worry is if we have so few people registered, there will be even less in the end participating in the election and in the end the um, government that then gets elected is truly only chosen by about less than 50 percent of the people like 30 percent or 33 percent of the people and i don't think that is um, a, a very good um, mirror of democracy then um, I believe as many people as possible should vote and should exercise their democratic right to vote. And at least then we get a government that um, are feeling more responsible to the people that chose them. So, Mari, which percentage uh, would you say uh, would be uh, at least uh, better for for Ipsos to say that at least a lot of people participated uh, during an election? Well, as we saw, now only 62% are registered of the eligible voters. I would say um, in the 2019 elections, we had a 66% um, participation, which was okay. That was fine. So 66% of the eligible voters actually participated. But the problem was in the local government election in 2021, only 46% of the eligible voters participated. So you see already less than half of the people who were registered did participate. Um I know there's a lot of things in the country that people say they don't know to vote for um, and a lot of uh, unhappiness about various issues in the country. But this is the chance to fix this. You know, there's an old saying that you always get the government you deserve. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, if you don't go and vote, you also get the government you deserve because you did not contribute to choosing this government. So for me, a good um, percentage of turnout will be probably, say, north of the 60%. So um, 64, 66, around there. That will be fine. And what are some of the reasons uh, for why uh, the 15% of registered voters have not aligned themselves with any uh, political party and who are often indicated as those who will not even vote? Sunny, what happens is that over the last few years, they developed a strong feeling among South Africans that they are clearly or frankly fed up 
with politicians. They are not thinking that politicians are doing their jobs very well. They say politicians are only in politics for themselves and not for the good of the people, that the the politicians are only there to enrich themselves and issues like that. So they have a very low opinion of politicians. And they say the political parties also miss the point. The political parties are not addressing the issues that matter to voters. So I can understand why people are saying they are really, honestly, fed up with politicians and political parties because these people's focus is only on themselves and not on the good of the country or what they can do for other people. What they actually are chosen for They are only in this for themselves. And then when they are in a position of of power, they uh, make sure that their families benefit. And at the recent IEC event, uh, the African uh, Transformation Movement leader said that the IEC should also conduct voter education in the rural communities. As many people from such areas don't know how uh, it's done when you have to register to vote, just a basic electoral processes. Mm. Do you agree with that statement? I absolutely agree with that statement. I also think we should have a a program in our schools to educate children at school why democracy, why we are a democracy, what is the not only the uh, the good things that you get for living in a democracy, but also your responsibilities as a person living in a democracy. What should you do? Um, in other words, um, the things about um, you know keeping the laws of the country, going to vote, interacting with your um, political representatives, things that democracy gives you, but you need to have a response to that. I feel, um, and we need to talk about young people because the um, proportion of young people who are registered to vote are so, that proportion is so low of young people. They have no interest in politics, or a lot of them, let me rather phrase it this way, a lot of them have no interest in politics. Um, they say that's something for older people, and they would rather have a demonstration or uh you know, something like that. And they also say, a lot of young people say, that unless this demonstration is violent, the government doesn't listen. So Mm. I also think that's an indictment on the government rather than on the young people. But if you have a program in schools to make children aware of the benefits of democracy, what democracy brings why Mm. south africa is a democracy what is your responsibilities as a person living in a democracy i think it will help to to get people to participate more and now when we look at the multi-party charter which according to your survey currently draws between 31 percent and 33 percent of the voters at this stage. eh? Mm -hmm. But you've also emphasized that uh, such results does not even include uh, election predictions. Tell us about that. Yes. um, You know, it is still about seven or uh, eight months before the election. The um, uh, election will probably be in May next year. Uh, Mm -hmm. I'm not putting my head on a block for about that but uh, it will probably in in may next year but uh you cannot make a prediction so long before an election Mm -hmm. you can only measure the temperature in the country and measure the um the state of the parties at this stage. You must remember that any survey is only true for the time when it was conducted. So You know, I can't ask you today who you would vote for and then assume that in eight months you will still vote exactly the same. So that is why it's not a prediction. You can 
And therefore, you need to make, do it regularly before an election to see how things shift, how many people make up their minds, how many people are falling out, saying they're not going to vote, um, and keep up to date. And only just before an election, you can do a proper prediction of what will happen. Um, now, as I say, it's a measurement of the temperature, the mood in the country and the current state of the political parties. Why does Ipsos think uh, that a lower uh, voter turnout will work in the ruling party's advantage and possibly even push their support uh, above 50 percent? I've done the calculations. Uh, it is not something that I've just grabbed out of thin air. I have done calculations using the data I have, looking at people's views on a wide variety of aspects, how committed they are to going to vote, how much they want to vote, um, whether they have voted before, the, you know, all their um, feelings about voting and developed an index, chopping the electorate basically up and say, if we have a 66% uh, voted turnout, which will be a high voted turnout, um, th and then I run that filter with all the data, and I can see what the result will be. Done the same for a medium turnout and the same for a low turnout. So if I run that filter based on all the different questions for the low voted turnout, I see that a lot more people in metropolitan areas and in big cities are not going to vote. They will just stay away on election day. Whereas the ANC support is much more focused on the rural areas. If you analyze ANC support, you will see that most ANC support comes from the rural areas. So, and they also have the opportunity to bus their people to voting stations, which they will do because how must a lot of rural people get to the voting stations? And that will be to the uh, advantage of the ANC if the voter turnout in the end is a very low voter turnout. It will definitely benefit the ANC more than other political parties. And the upcoming elections uh, is also bringing another dynamic now of the independent um, candidates. candidates. Are you expecting any uh, interesting uh, changes? I think the independent candidates um, is, I think, a very necessary thing at this stage. I do not believe that the uh, law allowing them to stand for the election really gives them a wide scope. Perhaps we can, um, you know, work on that and in future it can, can become better and we have more independent candidates. This is also, I think, a function of the fact that lots, so many people are, as I said, um, don't have any trust in political parties anymore. They will might vote for an independent candidate coming from an area, um, you know, really advocating the the interest of that area in in their work in parliament. So yes, I think it's an extremely good development. However, I do think we will only see independent candidates really doing well in metropolitan areas because. A lot more of the people who are standing as independent candidates live in the metropolitan areas, first of all. So that is basically their natural constituency. It is not such a widespread thing in the rural areas. Um, it is extremely difficult to, uh, to measure the support of an individual independent candidate. You have... You know, you can't do it on a national survey or anything like that. But I will be very happy if there are quite a few independent candidates in Parliament because I think things in Parliament are rather stayed uh, with people just voting in Parliament according to their party rules and not according to their conviction. And if we have more independent candidates in Parliament, there will be more people voting according to their convictions and less following the party line. That was Ipsos Knowledge Director Marie Harris speaking to Polity about their recent survey titled Possible Political Party Choices in the 2024 Election.